Gorillacom going 10-8. What's up, guys? Uh, first and foremost, shout out to the Ukiah shop and shout out to the Santa Rosa shop. Uh, the Santa Rosa shop, they found out who I was. Uh, and the Ukiah shop, he just a nosy body and, and found out who I was, too. And also shout out to uh, the firefighter that came into the comm unit and uh, introduced himself. And I'm sorry if I was very standoffish. Uh, it just freaked me out that somebody kind of recognized me and, and, and I was still processing that in, in my head. And I, for all you other guys, this guy came up, introduced himself. He was a firefighter from a strike team there assigned to this particular incident. And uh, uh, I was giving him the third degree, like, how, how'd you know? Uh, uh, did you two put two and two together? Somebody told you or what? But instead of being cordial and being, hey, how you doing? This and that and the other. And, and if people that meet me for the first time, that's how I kind of, that's the first impression that they get. But then I kind of, you know, open up a little bit and, and everything. And, and I'm sorry, dude. Uh, I was looking for you later on, uh, you know, just to shoot the shit and, uh, and talk a bit more, whatever. But uh, when you came into the tent, that was pretty much crunch time. There, we were we were going to go out and do something, and and y you know how it goes. So we all have our heads in a swivel there. So I uh, couldn't really, you know, say hello and, and converse with you. But uh, I feel real bad though about it too. So that's why I'm kind of, you know, saying I hope you're looking at this video and give me a drop, uh, uh, give me a line down at the in the bottom of the comments to say hey okay no problem or f you dude you're a prick <laughs> whatever but uh it, it happens i guess but uh i really wanted to talk to you later on and see you know you know learn about you and stuff and whatever anyways along with the video here uh that particular incident that we were all in uh i was able to get out to the field more often and, and actually deploy some equipment and uh if it's interesting, yeah, I like to take video and, and show you exactly what's going on, like the ranges of the radio equipment that we're sending out there and stuff like that, and actually actually showing you on the map and also on real footage to, to give you a feel of the ranges and the topography of the terrain that we're deploying this stuff so you guys could take have a better idea on what to do in your area. Uh, in this particular case, uh, a fire, a forest fire broke out, and and we were supporting some some comms for for all the firefighters out there, and and also you know police and whoever. But uh, this is one portable repeater that we sent up uh, at Bernie Peak up here. I don't know how well this is going to come out on the on video, but uh, it, this is a topographical map of the operational area there uh, around the town of Bernie. And this peak here is like 7,500 feet uh, foot tall, commanding view of the whole area here, pretty much. And uh, the first couple of days, we really couldn't put it up there because uh, uh, smoke and fire danger. It actually came up to this point here, and you can see this little fire line here that the, the fire was uncontrolled in this area here. So it was a danger for us to drive up there and also... Uh, we were smoked out, uh, so the chopper cannot land us there to deploy this uh, equipment there. So we set up another repeater over on that hill that's off the map. It's not, you know, within this map here. And another location towards the south, towards the south uh, east. But once we got the, the ability to go up to Bernie Mountain there, that was a game changer. Uh, it, it helped out a lot, and, and this stick here represents five miles uh, distance. And the radio itself is transmitting five watts, 
but at this distance it could reach all the way to the base camp which was something like 40 miles away I think a little bit more I can't sure I'm not sure it was 70 miles away driving so as the crows fly I would estimate maybe 55 I would annotate the true uh, distance from base camp uh, when I put, when I edit the video but this is the five mile radius of this repeater here though at this height here like I said it could project more than 20 miles plus of of comms out to this area here so it's covering pretty much this whole fire here this whole place is just lit up so on the video there I'll show you how, what it looks like in real life and uh, what we're doing and I think that's pretty much it there so it you know the more of these that I go to and I could film because sometimes I get deployed to these and I'm stuck on the comm tent fixing radios all day and never get out of base camp but uh, it just depends on, on what is needed uh, I'm sort of a veteran to, to this so I leave it to you know the, the, the less experienced guys to get out there more often for you know training or whatever and get their task books signed off or whatever so but you know I like to get my feet wet and and get into the fight and I like to go out as much as I can so but we were all gainfully employed in this incident here so we got we all got out to to these areas here so um, I was able to get some real life footage out in the field as to how this is deployed and and what it's doing and what the terrain looks like and the ranges of of the radios that are being deployed so this in turn possibly might help you in your little build or comp plan back at your home station or whatever. I guess it's just something uh, that should be documented really you know, to kind of you know give you an idea of how the radio works out in the field here at least for VHF transmitting 5 watts off of a portable repeater solar powered. Uh, that could translate into preppers and other first responder uh, organizations or hams. Okay guys, really quick, I'm losing some sunlight here. The sun is over there, due west and it's about to set maybe in a half an hour or so who knows and this is the solar panel temporarily set up on the southern exposure of this uh, lookout uh, that solar power panel is powering up this uh, portable repeater the portable repeater produces 5 watts of uh, power transmitting out of this half wave antenna up there now while transmitting it uses up 3.5 amps of juice right now it's in trickle charge mode and it's it's producing 0.27 amps almost a quarter a little bit over a quarter of an amp is feeding the batteries to this now this panel this solar panel is 90 degrees from the Sun that's over there the tracking of the sun is pretty much starts from the west there and it loops on over you know and all that stuff so ideally this is the ideal place to put my solar panel to get the most sun as I can now since it's trickle charging you know it's not gonna use up too much amps or not use up too much amps but feed too much amps It's kinda regulating the amperage going into the battery so I'm gonna transmit really quick this repeater here and it's going to simulate it's going to simulate uh, some current draw one amp one amp of juice is being fed in into this uh, portable repeater and on inside the internal battery that's pretty kick-ass for almost overcast conditions cuz uh, they wanted us to come up here and see how this thing is uh, performing because we're having uh, dry thunder 
we're having dry thunder uh, storms coming through here and it's very overcast and they were, and they were worried about the uh, charge of the batteries here so far this thing has been doing stellar uh, it covers this whole valley there over there in that mountain right there there's some smoldering going on on top of that mountain some helicopters military helicopters were dropping water on there I think it's a, yeah the National Guard was over there and the first few days it was burning this valley down here and on the other side the other side of this kind of little knoll here we couldn't come up here on the first day because the fire was actually coming up this mountain but on top here uh, it's pretty much a lava bed and lava rocks and outcrops it was never going to get up here but to travel up here would have been somewhat dangerous because the road sort of winds around here but on the second or third day we actually flew up here to uh, put this repeater here and it, it covered this whole operational area here five watts to cover all this and I could say that it's covering 40 miles that way at least uh, over that way some mountains over there uh, a couple of ridges over is covering all that it, it is a stellar sort of uh, positioning of this portable repeater we have one here we have one placed right on top of this tip right here another portable repeater and uh, there's another one somewhere but I think it's a fixed site that's uh, putting out a hundred watts so that's sort of the kind of uh, performance you should strive for I guess if you're building a uh, portable repeater for emergency services or something like that or whatever and this is just a real live example of what it's doing out in the field so we're losing we're losing some power here 0.25 so if I transmit to put a load on here Point two five amps. Not too bad. Okay, I'm gonna leave it at that. Get to the chopper! Get to the chopper!